Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about kinetics of a rigid body using work and energy. In the previous chapter, we talked about kinetics of a rigid body using kinetic equation, which were summation of forces equals mass acceleration of center of gravity and summation of moment Ig alpha. But alternatively, we could use work and energy. The two approaches can be used uh, for solving kinetics of rigid body problems and depending on the problem one approach is easier than the other one. So the principle is the same as work and energy of a particle. The initial kinetic energy plus the work that is done on the sample between instant one and two and gives us the final kinetic energy. Uh, so we need to first identify what is kinetic energy for a rigid body. Let's say we have an example here of a rigid body that is rotating about point O. The velocity at this point is Vg, and then we have rotational velocity omega. So the kinetic energy has two components. First, the translational component which is the same as kinetic energy of a particle, mass velocity squared. So that's the translational component of kinetic energy. In addition to the translational component, we have a rotational component of Rg omega squared. So this component is new. We did not have this component in uh, kinetic energy of a particle because for a particle size is negligible so moment of inertia is not defined so this is the rotational component so let me expand that for the kinetic energy half m what is the velocity of center of gravity so the velocity you can find a velocity based on omega so velocity would be Rg omega squared. And then write the other component. So if I factor half omega squared, I will find mRg squared plus Ig. So this is the definition of parallel axis theorem. So that would be I O. So my kinetic energy would be half I O omega squared. That means that I can write the kinetic energy equation based on uh, I O, the center of uh, the second moment of inertia about point O or about center of gravity. If I write about center of gravity, then I need to include the velocity of center of gravity as well. But if it is about a fixed point, a point of rotation, as the name suggests, it's a fixed point, so it does not have any uh, velocity. So you have the two options when you're writing kinetic energy of a rigid body. So the second part that we need to find is the work that is done on the sample between instant one and two. So the work is defined as FDR. And dot is the dot product between the first and the second instant. Or if I want to write it in a scalar form, I would have F cosine theta, DF cosine theta. Theta refers to the angle between the force and the displacement. So if theta is zero, then the work is maximum. If theta is 90, then the work is zero. So let's talk about the work of a weight, which is a common component in uh, work and energy problems. I'll show it by U sub W. What if the force is mg? What is the displacement? I'm going to show it by y. So if you have mass m, the force that is acting on your uh, rigid body is mass g 
And if the displacement is in the negative direction of weight, then you have this negative sign. That negative sign represents cosine of negative 180 or cosine of 180. So now let's talk about work of a spring. Work of a spring is F E F between the first displacement and the second displacement. The force would be negative K F times the S F one over S two. So for a spring, the work is always negative because the force always is applied at the opposite direction of the displacement. And if I take an integral, I get half k s to a squared minus s1 squared. So let's look at the negative sign again. So if we have a tension in our spring, let's say you have a spring here, or you want to apply tension, so that would be your displacement that you want to apply. And now your mass is here. The force that is being applied during this tension is in the opposite direction of your displacement. So the angle between your force and displacement is 180. So cosine 180 would be negative one. That's why you get a negative value. What if it's in compression? What if you apply compressive force? We have our mass spring system again, but this time we are going to compress it. So at this instant, the force is pushing away. So again, the force and displacement are in the opposite direction. So that's why we have a negative sign here. When I write my force, that force F is KF, but f dot the s so the cosine theta comes into play and this would be negative all the time and the last work that i'm going to talk about is work of a couple a couple moment that would be theta one theta two m d theta and uh, similar to previous works, if moment is if moment and theta are in the same direction, then the work is positive. Otherwise, it would be negative. If you have a rigid body rotating, d theta. If the moment and the displacement are in the same direction, you have a positive sign. Otherwise, you have a negative sign. Let's 